Okay. Hey, it's a, a wee live broadcast. Uh, we're in a different place. We're actually out and about at the end of the loch with the ability to move a wee bit further. So instead of being in the conservatory, I'm here with Kaylin and um, Poppy, whose house it is. And today we're going to be discussing quite a weird one. Horseshoe crabs. Horseshoe crabs. Which, if you've never seen it, is quite a weird thing. In fact, a very weird thing. And this one we're very lucky to have, uh, excuse the traffic going past, uh, Alistair McPhail in America, thank you for sending me this, he's actually sent three of them over. This is the biggest example, and they are pretty weird, so I'll let the sea savers tell you a bit more about them. Yeah. Who's starting? Yes. If you want it, you're going to go next to it. A what upside down? Uh, no, Just go for it. Speak. So this is a horseshoe crab. Remember to speak quite loud. And the horseshoe crab is split into three sections. The first section is the head. Now the head is the biggest part of the horseshoe crab, and the head contains many of the biological and nervous system, including the the brain, the heart, the mouth, and also the nervous system. And yeah. The next bit is the abdomen, which is shaped like a triangle with spikes going round it. And the third section is a tail, which is also known as a telson. Now the telson is long and pointy and is used to help flip the crab over if it's been flipped onto its back by any predators it might have. Cool. So, on the pretty weird looking things, to me that looks a bit like sort of, what they call them, the trilobites or something, the, I mean the, the fossils. Tri yeah, the trilobites, they also remind me of sea monkeys. They aren't true crabs, believe it or not. Despite them having crab in their name, they are actually more closely related to the sea scorpion, which is now extinct, the species they are most closely related to. They have nine eyes, which I was trying to find them all, but we couldn't actually <laughs> find where all of the eyes were. Um, if you want to see, underneath is really, really strange as well. They have this hard, hard shell. Um, obviously, this one's dried out. This is underneath. Um, it, it's really, they're, live, they're classified as living fossils. Um, we don't have many living fossil species left, so this is a really, really unique animal. Um, you can see all of its in, internal kind of parts. Obviously, these would be underneath it. Normally, it wouldn't have these exposed unless it had to. Despite that, they do swim upside down, um, which is interesting for me as well. I thought that they would crawl, but not only do they use that, they also do swim. You can see on its um, legs here, it does also have these small pincing, uh, pincing kind of claws, uh, snippers, whatever you want to call them. These are to help them keep balanced and also to, to kind of counter-attack in some way. Um, these parts are from its mouth. You can see a small hole in there and that is where it will put food into. So the mouth's actually in the legs? Yeah, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty nuts. It's, I think that was um, because that all of these legs help to pick up whatever they should be eating. Um, so how old are these? You said it's a living fossil, so... They are super old. What was that's what I heard, yeah, 450 million year old, which is just crazy numbers. Obviously, this individual is 450 million years old, just to clarify. That, how old were the turtles, can you remember? They were, that was into the hundreds of millions, wasn't it? But I don't think even close to this, like, this actually, this must predate most dinosaurs and everything. They did live through most of the dinosaurs going extinct. Um, again, kind of a crazy thing to live through. Um, they get harvested, and this is really interesting, this is why they're quite so well known. Obviously not everyone will know about them, but they are harvested for their blood, believe it or not. Mm. Their blood is really, really interesting. Did you want to... Mm. Did you? Okay. So, horseshoe uh, crab blood is, a qu is, is exquisitely sensitive to bacteria, so a lot of scientists use it to test the toxins. Um, and to test what is going into our bodies in stuff like IV drips and fluids in the hospital. So it's incredibly important in the NHS field. 
If anyone has ever had a flu shot, you can almost be definite it was tested out on this blood. Um, it doesn't contain the blood, which someone asked me about earlier, but uh, it does have, it does get tested on it. The other thing is that the reason that their blood is so sensitive is because instead of having their blood in cells, it is loose around their system. So it does come in contact with lots of body tissues and other parts of its intern internal organs. This means that it's got to be really sensitive and open to the fact because bacteria can get in really easily. Once bacteria is in, it does need to be able to counter this bacteria really quickly because it obviously it will spread very fast. Cool. So to have, when they use them medically, any idea how to get them? Or... So it's quite I'll a, turn it up a sad process. You can look it up online. There are clips. Um, so what they do is they catch these crabs. Um, a big part, place where they get a lot of their crabs from is the Gulf of Mexico. Um, this is a popular spot for most sea creatures that they use for this kind of research. They then hold them up and they take their blood out. I'm not entirely clear how. Um, so then they drain. They can drain. There's the people observing the five mile limit on uh, movement in Scotland. Yep. <laughs> Very well done. Uh, so they can take 20% of their blood without the crabs being in any danger. However, studies have shown that 15% of crabs do die whilst this process is taking place and other experiments have suggested that it could be more. So, uh, uh... So the, 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 when I was reading about it, it's, uh, well, the, the, there's four types apparently. Yeah, it's the Mexican, Indochina, Japanese, and somewhere else. <laughs> Scientific. But I think this one is a, a Gulf one because it did come from America, so I'm assuming it's a Mexican one. Um, I did hear that there's other uses for them. Uh, well, reasons why they're getting overfished. Did you come across any? Uh, I haven't. No. Um, so... There are quite a few. Um, the one that I found really upsetting was they use them as bait to, believe it or not, catch whelks um, <laughs> and eels. So they're using an endangered species to catch an even more endangered species. Yeah, because eels are getting really the, the ones that come over here and go yeah, out to the really Gulf bad. of Mexico. It seems that the Asian area where they are using these um, is probably the worst for using them as bait. Um, however, it does also happen in Mexico. Uh, there are loads of other reasons that they're using them. Uh, in China, they eat them. Um, I would not like to eat one. Uh, they do not look very tasty to me. Well, you were, you were saying that to me earlier, saying how weird it is, and I was in the middle of shucking some scallops. And we were looking at scallops, saying, well, maybe that's quite weird to people too. I guess it just depends on culture. The whelks will eat any, pretty much any rotten fish, so it is unnecessary for them to be using this. However, that is down to a slightly more debatable topic. I did read in one place that they, when they use them medically, they're supposed to keep them from, for like two, three days. Uh, take up to 30%, I think, maximum, is it? You, 20 to 30% really of, of the blood. And then they're supposed to put them back. They reckon some of them were unethical. Medical companies actually sell them for bait after that, which is pretty bad. Uh, another one I was reading about was um, developments, like turtles and that one. Yeah. Turtles. They are quite similar in the ways they travel. Um, turtles come onto their onto beaches to lay their eggs, and then they go back out to sea. They do this in similar areas each year. Um, most species that I've heard of come to nearly exactly the same spot. So, the horseshoe crabs are very similar in this fashion. They will come back to where they were born and lay their eggs there. Um, so that's quite weird. That's almost like salmon up here. Yeah, and salmon return to the same river, but they, they reckon they've tried uh, doing these artificially, trying to sort of like farm them, because you know that would be the the way yeah. to stop having to take them from the wild. But yeah, they reckon they can't do it; that they do need the same mud and sand combinations. Uh, it's a really interesting way they think, um, but this means that when the hotel developments or other buildings are built on the side where they would be laying or on top of where they would be laying. Uh, it can destroy entire habitats for them and numbers have shown to decrease whilst they have things like this happening. Obviously there are some more popular areas for them to approach and some not so often seen ones, but it does happen a lot.
so, so, Sots just messaged saying she thinks it looks like one of her dinosaur top trumps. <laughs> so it's quite cool. I mean, it does, it looks so prehistoric and the scale of it too, this, the, the other two I've got there, they're boxed up at the moment, but this one is quite big. And I know you hate touching it, so I think you should hold it to show the scale. <laughs> Don't drop it. I mean, see how big that is. It's... Okay, so I'm guessing this one's a female. Yeah. I don't know if it's like any other way of telling, like crabs, because they're not crabs, they don't have the thing. Yeah. And I'm wondering, that almost looks like gills, doesn't it? Yeah. Which would be, maybe we need to look into this a bit more, because it is quite bizarre underneath. But, pretty crazy thing. Apparently a lot of research been done into trying to get synth synthetic, uh, the blood, instead of having to use real blood, doing it synthetic, which, meant to have a look to see if it's been linked with corona at the moment because uh because it's so important in vaccines it wouldn't surprise me if these guys are actually linked in with research into corona vac vaccines too i think that's some of the eyes isn't yeah, it I, I did read something about the eyes because it's got different eyes it's got um it's quite primitive but they've got you know cones and rods in our eyes they're over a hundred times bigger the ones in here but um their eyesight is actually a million times better in the dark than it is in the day which is really bizarre and it's like because it is such a prehistoric thing but they do live in quite shallow waters was another thing which was uh yes, i was convinced that these lived in deep sea yeah, so was I to see them. We don't uh, to live in shallow waters it's but so it's they're cause, nocturnal then are they yeah yeah because they and, uh they eat at night they eat um sometimes algae whelks uh clams all of that uh, Yep, yeah, and so it's some of them out in the, I think it was the Indian waters, they live in the mangrove beaches, which again is a, a threatened environment, so that'll be another reason why they're probably quite endangered too. Yeah. So I don't know, that's kind of covered them, I think. Yeah. Anyone else got anything on them? You can see that actually inside they do have other things growing, like you'll see on the back of crabs. Uh, so like here you can there. see some common acorn barnacles growing on one of its legs. Um, you find these often, you find them in almost all climates, um, all over the world. Obviously if this one was from Mexico, um, that would have grown on it then. So it, it's, we don't actually know how old it is. Um, can you tell me the, how long do they live for? Uh, they can live up to 400, well they're 450 million years old. Individual ones, no. Um, so if anyone knows, happens to be an expert about horseshoe crabs, um, might be. There must be someone somewhere, yeah. yeah. I don't know what they'll be called, but um, cool. So yeah, that is the weirdest crab you probably will ever see. The weirdest non-crab crab. No, yes, like a crab. <laughs> fake crab. So yeah, now you can see the eye bit there. Huh? Yeah. So yeah, so I think that's it. So that's horseshoe crabs. From Alapol Sea Savers Bye. in the Highlands of Scotland. Thanks, goodbye, Poppy. Bye, Bye Caleb. Bye. Goodbye, all the tourists observing <laughs> five mile limits. Good to have you all flying past. So, cheers, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye bye.